and then all day I've been praying and praying and praying and you know and seeking God exactly is this what you want or is it not I sometimes second guess myself not the Lord but myself and um, this is where the Lord just kept keeping me there so um, we're gonna go with it uh, so it's first Samuel chapter 16 verses 1 through 13 Okay, this is small print, so take me a minute here. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from, the rain, from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer, with thee and say I am come to sacrifice to the Lord and call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show thee thou wilt show thee what thou wilt shalt do and thou shalt anoint unto me him who I name unto thee and Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said comest thou peaceably and he said peaceably I come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify thyselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not at his countenance or on the height or his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called to Abinadab and, um, and made him to pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. And then Jesse made Shema to pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are, are, here, thy, are, are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keeps the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch for him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beauty, beautiful countenance and goodly to look at. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Praise God. The Lord knows. Who does God see? Who does God see? That's, I, I believe that we've all, most of us here have been saved for a long time, but it's a good reminder. This weekend, the Lord reminded me again, you are who I declare you to be. <sighs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I needed that reminder. And sometimes that's what the Lord does for us. And that's what he's doing tonight. Samuel said Eliab has, has to be the one when he saw him, the oldest. But God said it wasn't him because he looks at the heart. He sees the heart of the man. He doesn't look at the outside, the man, the woman. He looks at the heart. God can see what we cannot see. Even at our, in ourselves, I think we're our worst critics and, and so many times, you know, other people might come. God can send other people to us to, to tell us what he sees in us, to, to lift us up, to remind us what he sees, or to help us to know what he sees. We, I, I think every one of us battles that. If nobody here battles that, you can raise your hand. There'd probably be maybe one. I think we all battle that. If we're not battling it right now, we have or we will. It just is the way it is. We work, we, we walk, we live, we work in, in a negative world. <laughs> and, and it's hard for us and we don't want to be prideful in that. But 
but we need to see who God sees. We need to know who we are in him. And, and that's where God wants us. And that's what he's trying to say to us tonight. He wants us to know what he sees. Uh, Jesse brought seven of his sons, and they were all rejected. I want to start out by saying I'm the youngest in my family. <laughs> and, and here, Jesse himself, David's own father, didn't see what God saw. He didn't see that at all. And so, um, to me, that's, I don't know, I don't know who my parents saw me to be. I know they loved me, and, and I know mom said to me one time, I knew you were going to be special, and, and that was it. But, but to have my father say, oh, you know, I'm out in the field, you know, with the, sh with the sheep, and, and not even to think that I should come in and, and pass before the prophet. Amazing, amazing, his own father. And so many of us have had fathers, uh, maybe not here tonight, but some have had fathers or teachers or, or uh, a neighbor or another child when you were young or somebody say something to you that uh, maybe, you know, somebody say, you're gonna amount to nothing, you're no good, and, 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 and you, you live with that. But when we get into the word and we become, we, we start to know who Christ is and, and learn from him and read the word and get it in us and, and we hear the preaching of the word and the teaching of the word saying, we are victorious, we are more than conquerors, you are who God says you are, you are this, you are that, all these wonderful things. And, and that's where God wants us to be, that's who he wants us to see. You can look in the mirror, you know, God help me to see myself as you do. We can have somebody say it to us all day long but we've got to know it we've got to believe it in our own hearts and see what God sees the Lord looks at you and he says I see a king the world saw a shepherd boy but God saw a king the world may see my I, I think about maybe my brother or my sisters um, and they may say oh that's little Cheryl you know she used to be shy and blah blah you know and 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 all these other things and and my school uh, classmates you know in, in grade school called me the jolly green giant because I towered over almost all of them you know and and they may see that but but God saw me today and God sees me tomorrow hallelujah God sees you today and he sees you tomorrow again the world saw a shepherd boy but God sees the king it doesn't matter what stage of life you're in it doesn't matter if you're the youngest the oldest it doesn't matter what our age is you are what God says you are and and to uh, if you're a teacher then then teach with all your heart. If God has called you to teach, I, I'm, I'm looking back here at uh, Sister Yavanda, and, and she's in that nursery. Isn't it every Sunday morning? She's in that nursery. God called her to be in that nursery, at least for this time. God has called us all by name. He knew who we were going to be. Even before we were conceived in the womb, He knew. He saw us. And, and he saw her in that nursery ministering to the babies. I don't have a baby right now, but, but she, she's ministering to our precious babies. Maybe your grandchild, maybe your child, but, but praise God. Praise God. You look at Sister Donetta. God is using her to minister to our children. And, and uh, Brother Mike and, and, and uh, um, thank you. <laughs> my mind went blank sister Stacy they're ministering to our teens praise God God called them to do that for this time in this place and and that's what God God has something for each and every one of us to do he's called us and he's called us by name um, he has great purpose for your life he's got great purpose for my life I, I'm telling you um, uh, uh, Sister Linda at the ladies retreat this weekend I needed to hear she prayed for me and when she prayed for me she said 
God says you are who I declare you are. And I needed to hear that, Brother Tony. I, I've heard things like that in the past, and maybe you've heard the same thing. But I needed to hear that Saturday. I needed to know one more confirmation. And maybe, maybe two years from now, I'm going to need to hear it again. <laughs> and I pray somebody will still be obedient. And, or I pray that I'm obedient and hearing and listening for the Lord to tell me that. Praise God. And that's what he wants for each and every one of us. We have to cast away all those negative things that have been told to us. My husband stuttered. And, and, and when he felt the call of ministry on his life, you don't mind me saying this, do you, babe? <laughs> but he felt the call of ministry on his life. And, and he had older men in the ministry saying, saying, I don't know, I think you need to think about that some more. Well, I can't imagine how that would have made me feel. I wasn't around in his life then, but my goodness, they did that to you too, brother, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. Who's, that's right. Who's doing the calling, man or God? Exactly. Well, you see, he doesn't stutter. Not when he's up here preaching, he sure doesn't. And he still doesn't, really, when you're in conversation with him. God saw what he called that man to do. And we have to go forth with our heads held high and our shoulders back and stand firm in the word of God. God called me to do this. He called me to teach that class. One of, one of, I'm looking at Sister Kathy up here. One of her gifts is administration. And she's using that gift to help the pastor and, and, and do some other things. But God has called her to teach at Agape House. We all have something somewhere. Even if you say, well, what can I do? I can't drive. I can't do this. I can't do that. Uh, but, but I'm telling you, you may be the one in the church that bakes the best pies. And I know David Stone told this story about a woman who, who needed to catch a missionary spirit. And, and she's like, but God, what can I do? She was an older woman and, and didn't drive and, you know, and just didn't know what to do and, and um, couldn't really go out door to door. And, and the Lord said, bake a pie. So she heard the Lord say that and she baked a pie. And then she said, okay, Lord, here's the pie. And God said, go take it to this neighbor, a young woman who had just moved in. She took that pie and that young woman, and she said, I just wanted to welcome you to the neighborhood. And she said, well, come on in. Let's have coffee and have a piece of pie together. And one thing led to another, and that young woman began to serve God. And the Lord said, bake a pie, bake another pie, and take it to another neighbor. See, there's something we can all do, even if it's baking a pie. God's not going to ask me to do that because he knows better. <laughs> <laughs> but he may ask you to do that. Something, the simplest thing for her that was simple, that was so easy, so good. And there's something we can all do. There's gifts and callings on our lives that we can use to, to walk in what God has called us to do. Praise God. Praise God. It took me a long time to say yes to the call of God. I... I knew it was there. <laughs> it was way back here somewhere. And I remember after I married David Stone, and one day he said to me, he, I was in the living room and he was in the kitchen. It was kind of an open concept there. And, and he said, so when are you going to preach? And I got mad and I said, when the Lord tells me to and not before. you know. And, and he's like, okay. <laughs> he told me about that later. And it, it was a couple of years later. And the Lord began to move me more and more in that area and used other people to just drop things in my heart. And he would drop things in my heart. And then it came, and it was time to do that. And, and it wasn't easy. I, I was scared at that time, but I loved it because I knew I love it today. I love it right now because I know that I'm right where God wants me to be. This is the place. This is the time, and, and I may not be pastoring a church, but when God asks me to do something like this, I'm ready to do it. And, and today when the call came, it was like, okay, okay, Lord. <laughs> and, and maybe even preparing sermons beforehand, but maybe none of those are the ones for that day. So you got to start from scratch. 
Whatever God wants you to do, if it's to teach, then teach. If it's to bake a pie, then bake a pie. If it's to just knock on your neighbor's door and welcome them to the neighborhood or say hi or wave to them across the fence, whatever it might be, God, go to McDonald's. <laughs> I know Brother Tony too well, I think it's. <laughs> but I don't, do you still go to McDonald's in the morning? <laughs> but you know, just going and saying something to someone. Uh, there was there was a man that was a part of uh, my home church, and he was an evangelist, and he was a wild man on fire for God, and and he started praying, God, use me every day to lead at least one person to the Lord. Do you know? Before I left Chicago, that man was leading at least one person to the Lord every single day, and now he lives in Colorado, and and he's probably saving all of Colorado, getting close to it anyway. <laughs> but praise God, he caught the vision. He caught the vision and he heard what God said. He heard that he is what God says he is. Praise God. And we have to do what God has called us to do. If we don't, we're kind of miserable. I don't know about you, but if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, I don't feel real good all the time. And, and it's there. It's there all the time. Can we look at uh, 1 Corinthians 2.9? He has equipped us to do his will. Oh, I, I forgot to start changing. <laughs> First Corinthians, what did I say? 2 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. We can't even imagine exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. It has not entered into your heart all that God has for you. You know, he'll, he'll tell us things a little bit at a time because if he shows us way out 10 years from now, we may turn and run because maybe it sounds a little scary. But God knows how to lead us and direct us and it's step by step by step but listen close and remember that the world may see a shepherd boy but God sees a king I said tonight wasn't going to be long with what I had to say because I really in my heart of hearts when I got home today really felt like we needed to take some time and come to the altars or find a place to pray we need to pray for our pastor we need to uh, pray for the ones that are sick. We need to pray for quick recovery for Brother Keith and Sister Barbara. And how is she doing? Does anybody know? Okay, okay. Um, but we need to, we need prayer. I notice, that I, I'm going to say this, um, and I said this to David this morning, I think it was, or last night, but I had said, it seems like Pastor was doing really good, and then we broke ground and the enemy got mad again. And, and the, he's on the attack again. And so we need to just pray tonight, but continue to pray. And one for another as well. Lord bless all of us. Amen. So let's go ahead and, um, Brother Keith, I don't know if you wanna play a soft uh, track or I didn't even think to tell you.